Uh, and I'm sure the weather was really nice, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was a good New York, it was a good New Jersey, New York weekend. My Syracuse Orange won on Saturday, the Giants won yesterday. <laughs> We're doing very well. Well, it's, it's a three-way tie in the NFC East. I mean, our three teams, which used to, you know, years and years and years were so strong. And it seems like we might finally be back to be a threat, right? I mean, because last night I watched the Dallas Eagles game. And I mean, the Eagles won pretty handedly over Dallas, but Dallas is a bona fide contender too. So now the Eagles are in first, but we haven't played the Eagles yet. So we lost to Dallas. You know how that, I mean, it's just, so had Dallas won last night, Dallas would have been in first because they beat us even though we're both five and one. So yeah, <laughs> my dad was at the game. Still 85 years old. Oh yeah. And no giants. Oh yeah. He's been a season ticket holder for 62, 62 or 63 years. Oh, thanks, Steve. Yeah, you'd think that they would recognize these guys, right? But they don't. And I and I emailed like management one time to say, like, come on. Like, like I think when they all hit 60 years or something, I was like, they're not on the field. Like something. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, hi. Oh my gosh. How are you? Wow. Oh, 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 yeah, that's why I wasn't here last year. Oh, my I broke my collarbone. First day I was on a mountain bike. Done in like living in Vermont. No, no, no. Mountain no. bike. I broke my collarbone. First day you got what you said, biking. He's still alive. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so how's it? I see. So how is it? Are you fun? Do you have full mobility? Yeah. Yeah. Totally fun now. Oh, good. That is so good. I was trying to remember. I feel like I'm in a time where Am I here three years or four? I'm here four years. So was it three, it's definitely three years. Yeah. I think it's four actually now. So yeah. I think so years. too. I think you got introduced in four. I think next next month is four years. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. I've been here four years. Well, I'm happy that you're still here. I am, and we've added now. I'm here Thursday mornings yeah. now too for a yoga and meditation class. Yeah. Hello, hello. We got all these lots of new faces today. Hi. Come on in. Take the middle. So you, you guys could take the middle right in here. <laughs> or, or take right up the front. Right up the front. Hi. How are you? How are you? Doing well. Doing well. Oh, this is great. Oh. Where's doing that? This will be bizarre if like everyone's online. Yeah, right. right. Well, if nobody is online, I guess we could take that down. So, I'm wondering, I guess they're going to do it. You know, I love it. And as long as they're not in the public, it makes it accessible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Doing well, doing well. Everybody grab two blocks. Everybody grab two blocks. We have there might be there's some here. See, see you brought them all down? Yes. I know there's some more. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm Nancy. I've been here as we just figured out four years, <laughs> almost four. And this is um, this yoga class. Uh, if there's many that haven't been here before, is definitely rooted in traditional yoga. Uh, I was trained in there's a lineage called Jiva Mukti Yoga, and our founder Sharon Gannon and David Life traveled to India in the 60s and brought yoga back, opened up a studio in New York City in the early 70s. And they incorporated music. Sharon was a trained dancer, <clears throat> David a trained musician. So they took what was a Yangar, the you know like only eight poses that you do, <laughs> and said, okay, we can we can expound on this. <clears throat> Excuse me. So my training is rooted in that, but it incorporates all the teachings from thousands of years ago. So I try and offer some of those teachings in this class. We do take it slow. I offer a lot of alignment cues. Uh, about half the class have been coming. So for anyone new, you can maybe peek over and not compare yourself. <laughs> <laughs> to your neighbor, but if you're not sure what we're doing, what pose we're doing, you can use them as a guide. I also demonstrate a lot at the front of the room. We still offer the class on Zoom, so if you're not with us and still want to take the class, you can dial in through the website, Glenn Eagle's website. So with that said, let's start in a seated pose. You'll see I always bring a yoga blanket. I highly recommend. Uh, they're not expensive. They're great to invest in. But we also use blocks. And the blocks are not a crutch. The blocks are there to help you enhance the different poses and to not struggle in the pose. So I know most of us have grown up with thinking that the harder you work, means that you're going to have greater gains. It's the opposite in yoga. We really want to not have any pain. Uh, we're looking to really use our breath to oxygenate our muscles to really, honestly, it's like a lifeline into aging. <laughs> That's how I think of it. It's a lifeline into aging. And we have a lot who have had various pieces of their body replaced that come to class, right? <laughs> and yoga is, still, yoga is still an available form of exercise. Yeah, <laughs> there's a few. All right, so starting with a seat, I always emphasize elevating the hips. So if you don't have a blanket, you can use a block, have it the width of the block under your sit bones. So you'll see me come to I, where I'm sitting on it, but then I'm gonna scoot forward a little bit. So my sit bones are really on the corners on the edge of that block. And I don't know if you were able to see the difference. So if I take the block away and I sit down, it's a bit of a struggle, quite honestly. I'm muscling my way into sitting up straight. But if I elevate, you see the difference in my spine? And that's really the goal. We're really looking to find lengthening of the spine in this seat so that your mind can be free of the body working so hard, if that makes sense. Um, another way to sit would be hero's pose, where you place the block in between your ankles. So if this is more comfortable for you, you can stack the two blocks and come to sit on them. Tops of the feet on the mat. So for anyone with tight knees, tight hips, this might be a good alternative 
And again, you can see how straight the spine is here. So I'm kind of pulling the rib cage in a little bit, taking the art, I don't want to be here, sticking my bottom out and creating that deep arch. I want that lengthening. So find the seats that you can sit in for this opening, which is about five minutes. So invite you to close your eyes or have them open or at a soft gaze. And everyone inhale deeply through the nose. Sigh it out through the mouth. <sighs> Take one more breath like that. Inhale through the nose. <sighs> and just in these next few moments, let your breath come to a natural state. Begin to check in with yourself. Notice if the breath is just flowing. If maybe there is a rigidness to it. By bringing your attention to the breath, noticing your breath, your inhales, and your exhales, we begin to allow our nervous system to be at ease. We all come to this class, this space, our mats, carrying different stuff. Yoga is a practice that looks to, the expression is yoke, to bring together mind, body, spirit, or soul, whichever you prefer, whichever speaks to you. So in the type of yoga that we practice here, we're looking to touch all three. So just taking it a step beyond only the physical. So in finding our seat at the start of practice, we're allowing ourselves to root down. We're allowing our thoughts to come to a calmer state. And by doing that, the practice helps us to open ourselves up more to compassion. Compassion for ourselves and compassion for the people that we come in contact with. Bringing ourselves back to our wholeness. So just imagine for a moment that you're sitting directly on the ground somewhere. What comes to your mind? What's the, what's the texture under your seat? Did you go to the woods, the beach? grass. So as we move more deeply into autumn, now if the season's not as dramatic of a shift down here as it is in other parts of the world, but there is a shift. You can feel it in the air. You can feel it in the, you can see it, see the light is different the smells, so let's honor this seasonal shift. Sometimes it creates a little chaos. Thank you, Mother Nature, for <laughs> reminding us. 
<laughs> but this connection to know that we are really the same as everything around us. Our energy, we breathe the same air as someone on the other side of the world. We breathe the same air that the trees breathe, that the ocean breathes. So those two sits bones, really feel those sits bones take root almost like it's a magnet, like you're magnetically attached to the earth. And then bring one hand to your heart, one hand to your low belly. Moving into a breathing technique called a three-part yogic breath, where we inhale a third, another third, another third, reaching our upper hand, reaching that collarbone, and then exhale a third at a time. So full clearing breath to start. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. And now inhale just a third of the breath. Another third, another third. Exhale a third, a third, and a third. Inhale a third. Another third, another third, and exhale a third, a third, a third. Three more rounds, just like that on your own. When we do a breathing technique like this, it's called pranayama. We're helping the mind focus on one activity. So one more round. And then slide your hands where they're touching in a prayer pose called Anjali Mudra. Tips of the thumbs gently resting against your heart space. Take a full inhale. Pause at the top and elongate the exhale. And just take a moment to notice. Notice how the body feels now versus when you first started. When you first sat onto your mat, notice if there have been any subtle shifts. Notice how your breath feels now. And whatever you're noticing, take a moment to use that to set as your intention for your practice. An intention is maybe. Uh, direction, a direction for your practice, what you're hoping to seek or find in this hour, your reason for coming to your mat this morning. It can be as simple as just to breathe more deeply. Or maybe it's that of gratitude to find more gratitude in your life. Maybe it's to clear space for something bigger as we shift into this new season. We typically open the class with the ancient sound of OM. So if you haven't ever OM'd before, you can listen. We actually 
pronounce it as it's spelled uh, phonetically, which is A U M or A U M. And then the M, you close the lips together. <clears throat> so take a full clearing breath. Inhale, exhale it out. And then inhale. And then let the hands come to the knees, slowly open the eyes, 25%. Open the eyes, another 25%. And another 25% until you're bringing in all this light, this space, rejoining the space. Hmm. Welcome. <laughs> Rock forward, coming to tabletop pose. Another reason for having a towel or blanket is to support the knees if the knees are at all sensitive. When we find tabletop, our alignment is our knees under our hips, tops of the feet on the mat. Stack your shoulders, elbows, and wrists, and spread your fingers. Gently press, put a little pressure into your thumbs, your index fingers, and the tips of your third, fourth, fifth fingers, so that you're creating a little bit of space under that palm as if you could put a blueberry under there and it would be fun. <laughs> and now draw the belly in. So feel the engagement in your core, engaging your abdomen. And then on an inhale, begin to lift the crown of your head, tilt your tailbone up. We call this cow pose. On your exhale, round the back, tuck your chin to your chest and tuck your tailbone. Inhale, reversing into cow. And exhale, pushing the earth away from you as you round the back, tuck the tailbone under. On your inhale, think about opening across the heart space, expanding across the collarbone, and then exhale into cat. Two more times, moving with your breath, feeling the expansion across the chest on your inhale, and then the broadening across the upper back in cat pose on your exhale. One more time, so matching our breath with our movement. And then come back to neutral, rock forward just a little bit so shoulders are coming past the wrists. And then take your hips over to the right, towards your heels to the left, making a big circle. So I invite you to make this as organic as you can. Noticing the air escaping <laughs> from your joints. When you've done three times one direction, reverse it. And if there is a side that needs a little extra attention, by all means, linger there. Give it some love, move with your breath. And then find your way back to tabletop. Take your knees a little wider, so your knees are reaching the edges of your mat, and bring your toes to touch, and then push your seat to your heels, finding what we call child's pose. Gently letting the forehead drop down to the mat, or if that's too low, you can place a block under the forehead. Allow the arms to relax. So just let the arms 
lay heavy on the mat and inviting your breath into the body. Allow your body to be breathed. Try tracing your breath. So imagine you can see the breath where it starts, middle, where the breath reaches to, and the exhale, tracing the breath again. The next inhale, begin to lift up, bring the knees back in so they're under your hips. And this time, moving into puppy pose, walk your hands, keep your hips where they are, just move your hands to the top corners of your mat. So your arms are a little bit wider, your hands are wider than your shoulders. And then begin to let the chest drop down to the mat, forehead dropping down. The sits bones and the hips are sticking straight up. So we're getting a deep shoulder opening here. So try and have your arms straight and widen the hands to the edges of the mat. Mm -hmm. So letting that chest fall down to the mat. Keeping the hips, you're not leaning forward. Keeping the hips back. There we go. Yeah. Not sitting back there. Right there. And then drop the chest down. Yep. There. Yes. Beautiful. One more full inhale. When we meet resistance with our breath, we're allowing tension to move out of our body. And then inhale, lift back up and walk your hands under your shoulders again. And now extend your left, your right leg straight back, coming onto your toes and drop the heel down. So you should feel a stretch in the back of that right leg. Inhale, rock forward on your toes. Exhale, drop the heel down. Inhale, rock forward. And exhale, drop it down. And then inhale, lift that right leg. So finding a balance here where we're leveling our hips out. Inhale, left arm up by the ear. The hand turns in so that your shoulder is getting an external rotation. Inhale, lengthen and exhale. Bring the elbow to meet the knee, slight rounding of the back. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, lengthen. Keep those abdominals engaged. One more time, inhale, lengthen, and then drop the left hand down. Cross the right leg behind. So keep the shoulders square. Now turn the head, gaze over the left shoulder, maybe catching hold of that big toe of the right foot. So this stretch, opening up the right side, we're getting into our psoas muscle. So if you feel that tightness by the right hip, that might mean that your psoas muscle is a little tight. So breathe into it. And then inhale, bring that right leg back to center. Drop the right knee next to the left. <clears throat> Extend the left leg behind you on your toe and then drop that left heel down inhale rock forward <clears throat> exhale drop it down rock forward and drop it down and then inhale lifting that left leg up flex that left foot push through the heel lengthening the left leg inhale right arm up by the ears so to find your balance here, draw the hips toward the midline. Inhale, lengthen. 
Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, elbow to knee. One more time, lengthening, and then drop that right hand down. Cross the left leg behind you. So keep the shoulders square. Keep the belly engaged. Now turn your head to look over that right shoulder. Breathing into this left side. Two muscles that make up the psoas. One on each side of your pelvis. So stretching the psoas muscle helps our nervous system. When we have a tight psoas, we tend to react more harshly to things or without being calm. Inhale, lifting that left leg back up and come back to tabletop. One more child's pose, but this one, keep your knees where they are. Push your seat back to your heels and then wrap the arms alongside your legs, letting the crown of the head drop down, more of a rounded child's pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. One more full inhale. And exhale, then slowly round up to sitting on your heels. And then lift up so you're standing on your knees, just like this, separating the legs a little bit so your knees are hip distance apart. Take that left leg out to the side and plant that left foot. Have the left edge of your foot parallel with the wall. And then slight adjustment for our low back. So one hand on your belly, one hand on your sacrum, and really lengthen your tailbone down so that your torso stays in line with your leg. Inhale, right arm up by the ear. Fingertip, walk your left fingers down the left leg and reach through the right fingertips. Beautiful, everyone. So looking for length here. So if you feel like this right chest is collapsing, bring that open. It might mean to not go as deep. Straighten this right arm. So instead of collapsing that chest forward, you're keeping this left side in line with your thigh. Opening up. So what you're doing is breathing into the right side of your rib cage, those intercostal muscles, and exhale. Come back to sit on your heels for a breath. Full inhale. And exhale. And then standing back up on your knees, take that right foot out to the side. Same thing. Parallel the side of that right foot. Make that adjustment with your low back. Inhale the left arm up and then walk those right fingertips. So as you're walking the fingertips down, lengthen through the left. Opening this side of your chest. Breathe in. Breathe out. If you're forcing, if you find yourself holding your breath, that's a good indication to ease out of the pose. And exhale, lowering that hand down, coming back to hands and knees. Draw the belly in, and then step both feet back, finding plank pose. Plank pose, same pressure in the hands as tabletop. 
putting pressure in your thumb, your index finger, and your tips of your third, fourth, fifth fingers. And then drop your knees down, rock the shoulders forward, turn your elbow creases to the front of your mat, and then lower chin and chest down. Your sits bones are sticking straight up. And then inhale as you slide onto your belly. So setting up for Cobra Pose, you wanna plant your hands by your lowest set of ribs. Fingers are still spread. Take a moment to draw the elbows in toward the sides of your body and draw your shoulders away from your ears. And now press into the tops of your feet lengthen down through your low back and then on an inhale lift the upper body and exhale lower down keep drawing those shoulders away from the ears inhale lift up and exhale lower down inhale the power is coming from our legs to help our upper body lift and exhale lower down now tuck your toes under Push your seat all the way back to your heels. Arms are fully extended, spine extended. And now gently just lift your knees and shins. But staying in this kind of elevated squat pose. Now slowly begin to straighten your legs. Hips lifting up to the ceiling, coming into downward facing dog. So take a moment here to explore how the body feels in this pose. Where are you working the hardest? If you feel like there's a lot of weight in your wrists, bend your knees a little bit. Feel like your sit bones are moving up toward the sky. One more full inhale. And then exhale, drop your knees down to the mat. Push back into child's pose. Inhale to tabletop. Step both feet back, finding plank pose. Rock shoulders forward past wrist, lower knees. Hug the elbows in as you lower chin and chest down. Inhale, slide onto the belly. We'll move right into cobra. Inhale, lift up into cobra. And exhale, lower down, tuck your toes under. Push your seat back to your heels. Start by lifting knees and shins off the mat. Low belly moving toward the thighs, then straighten the legs. This time, pedal out your downward dog. So drop one heel, bending the knee of the alternate leg, and just alternate. And then come to stillness. Come up on your tippy toes, lifting your heels. Really feel your hips moving toward the sky. And then just gradually let your heels drop down. Lift your gaze, look between your hands, and walk one footprint at a time up to the top of your mat. And inhale, lifting up halfway, fingertips finding your knees. Draw your shoulders away from your ears here. Float your arms up shoulder height, forming a T. Notice the engagement in the core here. Press into your feet, lift all the way to standing, float the arms overhead, palms touch. Exhale, hands to heart center, and just pausing here for a breath or two. Come back to the intention that you set, your why. On your next inhale, let's float the arms overhead. 
As we exhale, find it hinging of your hips. Feel like you're swan diving toward the mat. Coming into our forward fold. So some of you might be helpful to grab a block and place your hands on the block. Might be at the highest height or the middle or the lowest. Going back to not necessarily muscling into poses. So just for a moment here, let your head hang heavy. Shake your head, yes and no. And then bend the knees a lot and roll up to standing. Let the head be the last to come up. Inhale, float the arms overhead. Exhale, dive right back. Hinge at your hips. Arms come out to the side. Lead with your heart. Forward fold. Bend the knees. Roll up to standing. So we'll do this flow two more times. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, hinge at your hips. And forward fold. Bend the knees. Roll up to standing. Inhale, flip the arms overhead, palms touch. And exhale, arms come out wide, flowing into Uttanasana, forward fold. And then bend your knees. Take your blocks. Place them on the outside of both feet at the middle height. And then step your right leg as far back as you can. So we're finding low lunge. Low lunge, we want to form a 90 degree angle with this left knee. So left knee, left ankle forming a straight line and really press that right heel. So you're lengthening that right leg. So feel that length, chest is open, and then drop that right knee down, uncurl the toe, and bring the blocks under your shoulders at the highest, finding what we call Anjaniyasana. So starting here with stacking our shoulders and our hips. Press into the top of the right foot, ground down through the left. Draw the hips to the midline and then inhale the arms up, making a wide V. Lift and lengthen the spine. So you're lifting the chest up to the ceiling. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. One more full inhale, chest lifting and opening, and then exhale, hands back down to the blocks. And now lean into that left knee a little bit. You can bring the blocks forward if that helps to add the upper body. So we're getting a deeper stretch for that front right quad, our psoas muscle. Breathe in and breathe out. And then come back, shift your hips, bring the blocks under the shoulders again, and now flip the left toes up. So you're resting on your left heel. Right hip stays in line with right knee. And then this might be a deep stretch for you. If you feel it in the hamstring, you can stay upright, or you can begin hinging forward <laughs> to deepen that stretch. Keep that left foot flexed. Chest moving toward the left leg. Breathe in and breathe out. And then inhale to lift back up. Clamp that left foot. Place the blocks on either side of that left foot. Curl the right toes under to lift back to low lunge. And adding a twist here, plant this left hand on your block and lift the right arm. Soften the shoulders. 
Not dumping our weight into that left hand, reaching through the right fingertips. And then exhale, lower down. And now we're gonna step the right foot forward about a foot and a half and straighten both legs. Locks can come to the highest if you need to lift up a little bit and draw your left hip back. You can even put your hand on your sacrum, make sure your <coughs> sacrum is level. Draw the belly in, this is called pyramid pose. One more full breath, inhale and exhale. And then put a little bend in that left knee and step the right foot forward. Inhale, lift up halfway and exhale, fold. Let's add an arm bind. So hold opposite elbows. Let your body just hang like a raggedy and off. Yeah, you can add a sway from side to side. Try and let the head hang. Release tension from the neck. And then inhale, release the bind and lift up halfway. And now we're going to do the other side. Bend your knees. Blocks come to either side of your feet at the middle height. Step the left leg all the way back. Form a 90 degree angle with the right knee. So really press through the left heel to lengthen that left leg. Feel the chest open. And then exhale, drop the left knee down and curl the toe. Bring the blocks under your shoulders. So you're finding Anjani Asana here. So to find greater stability, press into the top of your left foot. Ground down, root down through your right foot. Draw the belly in so your ribs are hugging the belly. And then inhale, arms float up. This time interlace the fingers behind the head. Draw the elbows back, lifting the head, the neck, opening the chest. Elbows moving back. Getting that opening in our shoulders, across the collarbone. One more full inhale and then exhale, the hands back down to the blocks, deepening the bend in this right knee. You can move the blocks forward if you wanna add the upper body a little bit. So bringing that left hip down toward the mat, stretching that left quad. Getting into the psoas muscle a little deeper. And then inhale, come back, blocks under shoulders, flip the right foot so the toes are pointing up. So half Hanumanasana. So make sure your left hip is in line with left knee. And then you can take this as deep as you want. So think about lengthening the spine in this pose. Keeping the right foot flexed, breathe in and breathe out. And then inhale, lift back up, plant that right foot, bring the blocks forward, tuck the left toes under, low lunge, then really have this right hand resting on the block as you lift that left arm, opening into the twist. Left chest opening, breathe in, breathe out. Left fingers reaching up high and then exhale, lower down. This time, step the right foot back to plank with your hands on the blocks. Now lift your hips. Come into downward dog. See what it feels like with your hands on the blocks. Maybe the heels drop down to the mat a little bit more with that extra lift. 
And then look between your hands, either walk one footprint at a time, or for some, maybe you wanna pop your feet forward. <laughs> Inhale, lift up halfway. I did forget pyramid pose on that side. <clears throat> All right, bend your knees. Take that left leg back again. Low lunge. Now step that left foot forward in about a foot and a half. Blocks maybe come to the highest, lifting up halfway. Find a leveling of your hips. Draw the right hip back. And just like in half Hanumanasana, you can start to hinge, moving the chest toward the right knee. And now inhale, lifting up halfway, put a little bend in that right knee, step the left foot forward. And now bend your knees a lot. Let the belly come onto your thighs. Bring the fingertips on either side of the feet. Inhale, lift the arms up by the ears, lift the belly off the thighs, chair pose. Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale, straighten the legs. Slight arch back. And exhale, hands to heart center. Find Tadasana. Close the eyes. Press your feet into the mat. Rooting down. Lift your toes. Spread your toes. And then pinkies to the mat, fourth toe, third toe, second, and the big toe. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. Lengthen down through your tailbone. So you feel the energy coming up your legs up your spine, out through the crown of your head. And then open your eyes and let's meet on our backs on the mat. So come all the way down, have your blocks close enough where you can access them and come all the way onto your back, setting up for bridge, which is one of our back bends. And I want you to grab your block Hold the shortest side in your hand and then place the block in between your thighs as close to your pubic bone as you can. So the block comes in between the thighs and now draw your thighs where they're hugging the block. And then either place your palms down onto the mat or you can also Grab a hold of the edges of your mat. So bridge pose, we want to never turn our heads in bridge. So keep your gaze and your nose facing the ceiling. And then on an inhale, feel like you're pressing into your feet, thighs hugging the block, and lift your hips up. Feeling a little pressure in the back of the head. The shoulder blades, keep the thighs moving in toward the block, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. Breathe in. On the exhale, slowly Lower down one vertebrae at a time. So we'll do one more bridge just like that. Just reach for a moment, reach your fingers and make sure that your heels are close enough in where you can reach your heels, the backs of your heels with your longest finger. And then keep your feet and your knees in line with your hips. Inhale, press into your feet, thighs hugging the block as you lift your hips. 
If you find that your back is fully lifted and you wanna add a little bit of a chest opener here, roll, tuck one shoulder under at a time, and then try interlacing the fingers under your back. Arms pressing into the mat. Just imagine for a moment that you have nostrils directly on your heart. So with the chest fully open here, your breath coming directly into the heart, inviting in more love and compassion for yourself, greater self-care. And then if you tuck the shoulders under, untuck them, come back to where you can then gently, everybody lower one vertebrae at a time. And then take your block, lift your hips up so you can slide your block under your sacrum at the lowest height, lowest level. So this is meant to be a nice supportive bridge pose. We don't wanna work too hard. So lowest level. And then just let the arms float out away from the body about 20 degrees, palms face up. The feet are still, <clears throat> feet and knees are still hip distance apart. We're gonna deepen this a little bit for our psoas muscle. So we'll move into it together. If it doesn't feel good, just come back to this supported bridge. So one leg at a time, extend the legs out to the mat. Heels resting on the mat. The legs are about hip distance apart. And then we add the arms, float them overhead. Palms face up. Just glide those shoulder blades under a little bit. So notice where you might be clenching. Notice where you're trying to hold yourself up and see if you can let go. Again, imagine those nostrils on the heart. You're welcome to close your eyes if that's comfortable. So letting our psoas muscle just relax here. Feeling that stretch in our belly. Trace the breath from the beginning, middle, to where the breath reaches and then tracing the exhale. Begin to lower the arms alongside the body. Bend one knee at a time, bring the soles of the feet to the mat. Press into the feet to lift up, slide the block out, lower the back to the mat. Hug the knees into your chest. Rock from side to side, feel a massage for the low back, for your sacrum. And then keep the knees hugged into your chest and let the arms float out to the side. So the arms are coming straight out from the shoulders. And then begin dropping your knees down to the left. And as you drop them, lift the right arm. Float the right arm over so you come onto your left side and have your right palm meet the left palm. Now open the right arm only. Keep the knees where they are. Keep the left side where it is. And just let the right arm float open to the right. One more time, inhale, lift that right arm up and over. 
meeting the left palm. Inhale, lift that right arm up. And this time we'll stay in the twist. So let that right arm just rest on the floor. Your gaze either looking straight up or if it's comfortable to turn your head and look out over your right arm. It's an option. Breathe in. Breathe out. So our twists, think of them, it's like a towel. Towel that's wet, that you're wringing out. So our twists help to wring out the toxins from our intestines, from our gut. Allowing the tension to leave our body helps to create space. To help us in our daily lives. On your next inhale, feel the breath gather in your belly as you lift your knees to center. Take a moment to find neutral. Take an inhale and your exhale, lower the knees down to the right, lifting that left arm, bringing that left hand to the right. And then only lift that left arm. And your exhale, lift that left arm back up and over palm meeting palm. Inhale, lift that left arm, coming into your twist, letting that left arm rest on the floor. Feeling that openness, that opening of your chest. Gaze, looking at the ceiling or eyes closed, or you can turn your head to look out over that left arm. And noticing here how the breath feels. Try and take your deepest breath of the day. Your next breath, feel it gather in your belly, lift your knees to center, finding neutral. And then wrap your arms around your knees, lift your forehead up to your knees. Take a tight yogi ball, giving yourself a hug, some self love. And let the head drop down, extend the legs, speed up to the ceiling. So just reversing our circulation helps our nervous system, helps our circulatory system. This is called legs up. Do this against a wall sometimes. This is in Sanskrit, Viparidi Karani. Just let the backs of the arms rest on the floor, about 20 degrees away from the body, palms face up to allow the shoulders to relax. Feel the earth support your whole back. And slowly, slowly bend the knees. Extend the right leg out onto the mat, right heel toward the right corner of your mat. Slowly extend the left leg, pushing the heel. So push your heels toward the mirrors, lengthening the legs, and then 
Just let the feet totally relax. Press into the backs of your arms to lift your chest and glide your shoulder blades under. And then let the arms completely relax on the floor. Finding Shavasana or rest pose, also called corpse pose. Take a deep breath in through the nose, sigh it out through the mouth. And then just follow your natural breath, your natural inhales and exhales. I've done some training with an instructor who's based in New Jersey. Share some of the words that uh, I read that she wrote last night. Ease allows us to be more grounded, open and present. When we have more ease in our bodies and minds, we are able to stay more open and present in the heart, which allows us to cultivate and access more compassion for ourselves, for each other. So through this seasonal shift, through this seasonal change, finding ways to sustain ourselves through the change. <laughs> Inviting more ease. Gives us greater capacity to choose how we want to participate in change. Never underestimating the power of rest. So just take a few more moments here to really feel the support of the earth under your back. Where else can you soften? Where else can you release? Can you soften the brow, the jaw, the eye sockets. Soften the shoulders, the belly. giving ourselves permission to rest. We're so used to being programmed to think that we have to go, go, go. But when we rest our bodies, we heal. We let tension move out of our bodies so we can heal.
Move your hands to your belly, deepen your breath, feel a rise and fall of your breath. Inviting in this deeper breath. Wiggle your fingers, circle your wrists, wiggle your toes, circle your ankles. On your next inhale, maybe float the arms overhead, take a long stretch. And then hug your knees into your chest. And before coming up to a seat, roll onto your right side. So whenever we come out of a rest pose, we want to give our bodies an opportunity to awaken. So coming onto your right side, your heart, Breathing into the heart and letting the energy move from the heart to parts of your body. And when you feel ready, press into that left hand to move yourself up to an easy seat, crossing the legs and invite you to have a soft gaze or close the eyes. Bring your hands to heart center once again. And just a gentle bow of the head. And take a moment to thank yourself for being here, for sharing your energy with everyone here in this space, for breathing, for having more compassion for yourself. The light in me sees and honors the light in each of you. Let's seal the practice with the sound of Om. Take a full inhale. Oh. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hope to see you again. <laughs> and I'll be here Thursday for yoga and meditation. Okay. So we're going to give That's that a try, 9.30 right. for an hour. Great. Yes. So we'll do a little slow flow, Deb. You guys.